Mike, uh, the changing the schedule to two regeneration days is that you know to help recover from the preseason and get ready for the off or for the for next week? Yeah. Or what was the reason for that? I, you know, probably just figuring out what's best for the football team. You know, and just trying to make sure that you know we're meeting, we're lifting, uh, focusing on conditioning. You know, we conditioned today, so. Um, it, it's a long, it's a, next week is a long week. And the more I thought about it, you know, I think that uh, this is going to be best for our football team and then be able to take, you know, a few days off this weekend, you know, come back Monday and, and really focus in and, um, you know, have a great week. But it's a long week and, you know, we have plenty of time and I feel like we're getting a lot out of the meetings um, in our preparation. Um, and this is what I felt like was best for the football team. How good does it feel to be back here today? Uh, John said you had a big smile on your face. Yep, we. Uh, th this is, uh, you know, this is home. This is what, you know, certainly we as coaches know, and you know, this is what uh, this is what I love to do, and uh, so it's great to be around everybody again. And you know, you realize um, how much you miss it, you know, and how much you miss the interaction with the with the players and the staff and everybody. What ultimately ended up being the difference for uh, with the wide receiver group, given that Dez was one of the odd guys out and ended up back on your practice squad? I'm sure John addressed most of the personnel issues. You know, I think just the same thing. It always goes from my standpoint is how much can they do? How many positions can they play? Um, how do they perform? And you know, special teams certainly is is something whether they can return or whether they're you know, two or three, even four phase special teams guy. Right, Mike. John talked about uh, Makai and how he ran physically, how he covered on kickoff. In terms of pass protection, how do you feel about him right now and his progress there? Well, I don't think that would be predominantly his his number one job. You know, I think that that's something that um, will take time. I think he's willing, and he's shown that he's willing to to stick it up in there and um, you know not shy away from the contact that's required. Um, you know, but I wouldn't say that that would be his predominantly uh, number one role or job, you know, as it stood now. So I think that it's continuing to improve and that he's a willing blocker. How important to have Barkley be able to stick around and have an experienced guy like that for the practice squad? Well, I mean, I think it just gives us, you know, a, a lot of flexibility in, in what we're doing, some protection. You know, John had, I think, maybe asked a question, you know, about having the third you know, quarterback and what we may do at that position. Um, certainly liked Matt's uh, demeanor and willingness to work, liked his arm talent. And so, you know, we'll wor keep working with him on the practice squad. What, what's this period like when, when a lot of guys maybe are still in limbo because you, you still have some moves to make? And what are your message to guys who maybe didn't make it um, and maybe those who didn't? I mean, I think the message is, you know, the, the, the same, that – the roster will remain fluid uh, as we work our way through the entire season, not just here in the first week. Uh, anybody that's on the practice squad or anybody that's on the active roster uh, should be ready to play if they're healthy and available. Uh, we've seen guys get called up on Friday or Saturday uh, and make an impact in the football game and, and earn opportunities that way. So, you know, if they're here, you know, they're expected to, to be ready to perform. You know, whether that happens every week, I'm not sure, but. You know, there's a lot of flexibility with the, you know, the standard elevation and the call-ups and, and things like that. The safety position, you guys kind of had guys in, had guys out, et cetera. You ended up keeping six. Is there anything in particular that like, you were searching for or any reason for keeping six as opposed to, you know, maybe four or, or five, et cetera? Again, I think John probably handled most of the personnel conversations the safety position is something where you're going to have to be, um, you know, you're going to have to help us on special teams. I think you guys have seen since we've been here, and, and certainly that Kevin Byard was a PP on the punt team for us, you know, while he started. Um, but, you know, we, we, there's a lot of times where we play three safeties on the field. Um, and, um, you know, I think that those guys have to do a lot. That's a versatile position where guys are down in a the box, they're back in, the, you know, in the middle part of the field. You know, they're in the half, um, and, and sometimes they're blitzing. So, you know, that's a, that's a certainly an intriguing position you know, throughout the league, and you know, I don't think we can can have enough of them. You've got some flexibility now, obviously, with the nine guys still off on on COVID. Do you anticipate um, 
the, the short term IR still being something that might be in play for you before opening day? Uh, I think so. You know, I think that that's something that we have. We'll have to to, to see who's going to be available. Um, and those are conversations that we have with Todd and, you know, John and myself on who's going to be available at what part in time of the season. And, you know, I think that those things um, are going to have to happen. I mean, some of those moves are going to have to happen. I don't know which one specifically, but, you know, you're going to have to make room for, for guys that are coming off of, uh, you know, COVID. The, the move to, uh, to cut... Barkley, I guess, are you confident that Ryan is returning almost immediately from from COVID? And, and I guess overall, are there other players too that are expected to return? I think we're hopeful that this will be um, a positive next few days for us in that regard. Uh, is the Arizona game plan done at this point, or do you go through a typical week in terms of that sort of process next week then, too? Well, it's it's not done. I mean, I think that it's, you know, we're focusing on on bits and pieces of it, and we'll be well ahead of, you know, where we would be on a normal week, but you, know, you only have a few preseason games to go on, and, you know, obviously, whatever the, the they played last year, knowing that there's going to be different looks on all three phases, you know, so I think you have to be careful doing too much, um, you know, early in the season. You know, you have to go out there and let these guys, let their base rules and fundamentals take over, sit there and say, hey, this is what you're going to get, because I don't think anybody knows um, exactly what you're going to get. Uh, we can try to narrow it down for them and understand the, the concepts that they may see, but to say 100% or 90% like you're going to get this, uh, there's just not enough evidence of that on film. So, you know, the the going back to the game plan, it's it's uh, it's in. You know, I wouldn't say it's entirely in, but we'll work our way through. You know, how much we give the players each day. We were bumping inside to to three tech. Is that something that you guys had foresaw when you were evaluating him, or is that something that as you got your hands on him, you felt that was that was going to be a possibility? I think it's just kind of how it turned out there in the preseason, and you know, he made some plays in there, and you know, made some plays out on the edge, so. You know, on third down, just trying to find different pieces and guys that can back up, you know, or play more than one position. Your coaching staff doing well? Are you adding as opposed to subtracting? I mean, I think our coaching staff's doing well. Yeah. You've well, we been through preseasons as a player plenty of times, and how important did you find it as a player was it to, to get into some games before having to play for real in the regular season? Uh, I think it depends on the year, Gentry. Um, you know, I think that there's uh, there's a level to preparation that probably uh, needs to happen as far as just a mindset, a, 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 you know, that, that it's not just a practice and you're going out there to try to um, accomplish something. You know, whether that be 15 plays, 20 plays, or as some younger players, or when I was a younger player, 50 plays and, <clears throat> you know, all the special teams. So, um, you know, without knowing who that you're referencing, I still think that it's important, you know, and again, there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, guys that we've played here in the past or even this year uh, during the preseason. What was your experience like, Mike, you know, during this quarantine? Were you pretty much just basement guy? And, and also, I guess, did your, did your family manage to escape the, the COVID everybody's, situation? Everybody's fine. Um, you know, Jen's good. The kids are good. Basement. Um, was where I pretty much hung out. Um, you know, that's it. Easy to do, you know, meetings, Zooms, that kind of stuff. From did you run into any difficulties, or was it? Oh yeah, it was just smooth sailing, John. I mean, just just imagine your one of your Zoom interviews that, that you try to get on. It, it felt the same way, like the the hamster wheel, the blue wheel of death that comes up on the on the Exos machine. That means it's about ready to crash, and then the power goes out apparently every hour. Uh, you know, down Hillsborough Pike. So that those are a lot of things that we dealt with. You mentioned guys on the practice squad need to always be ready because you can get caught up on Friday, play on a Sunday. What would Dennis Fitzpatrick, where does he need to grow for him to be ready for one of those opportunities? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we've had conversations with Des and, you know, just the, the consistency, the, um, the, the willingness to play without the football in your hand. You know, I mean, that's, that's what you're going to have to do. Um, to, to play receiver is to be able to go and, and do things without the football in your hand and, 
and also then then be really good when you're running routes and catching the football. So, um, you know, we've we've had conversations with Des. We'll continue to have conversations, continue to coach him, and um, you know we'll see where this where it all goes as the season unfolds. I mean everything that you could do without the football in your hand. You know, running great routes, being you know. There's times where we ask guys to, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, it might, you know, smoke it through the middle of the field, right? Because now, you know, they have to respect you, they have to honor you, which then could open up other routes, intermediate routes. Um, that that would be a way that you would play better, you know, without the ball in your hand, or, you know, you have to clear something out, or you have to, to be able to run a route to to rub or open up things, and then as well as block it. Kind of touched on the Cardinals. What kind of challenge do they present to you as a Week One opponent, maybe on each side of the ball? Well, I think that they're uh, they're obviously talented. You know, they have a dynamic quarterback that um, you know can go 80 yards. You know, I saw you know third down and 17. You know, he scrambles for a first down. He goes you know 70 yards um, against Carolina, 70 some or whatever it was. Um, Pulls it in the red zone, 20-yard touchdowns. You know he slides, he he makes you miss. Um, strong arm, you know. Strong. I think that was the thing that shocked me the most was was how strong his arm is. You know, very willing to throw outward breaking routes across the field. Um, two good tailbacks. You know, obviously Hopkins. You know, our familiarity with him, AJ Green. You know, the, 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 the inside receivers, ones that they have coming back, and you know, they've got some new pieces. They've got a, a center that I've got a lot of respect for, um, who's, who's been a great player for a lot of, lot of years. You got a lot of length on defense, you know, on the edges, and then they've added you know, a lot of you know, length inside you know, with, with Collins and Simmons. So you know, certainly um, Buda Baker is, is a very disruptive player from anywhere on the field. You know, we could go all the way down and, and through the roster, but talented and, and a lot of length on defense that we'll have to deal with, you know, when we try to, you know, either run or, or try to throw the football. Is there a challenge for Todd, whoever you have, <clears throat> you'll have the fullest cast of characters that you've had on offense, calling, calling plays for that group for the, for the first time as opposed to live periods of preseason that you've had? No, I mean, I think that that's just all going to be part of it. And there's things that you think, okay, I'm sure that there's plays that that we're going to have that maybe um, are for a specific player or maybe aren't, you know, just can kind of call it and run it with whoever's in there. I'm sure there'll be plays that are designed um, for each guy. And, you know, it's, it's a work in progress as far as just making sure that, you know, those guys that are going to be coming back in there that maybe we haven't seen so much in, in preseason – uh, are working hard, and those guys have been, and you know, excited for really excited for Monday.